Good afternoon everyone, this is the Mastermind Millennial Channel. My name is EJ and today our inspired millennial scripture is coming from the book of 1 John chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Let's get into it. And the scripture here says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for our ours, but also for the sins of the world. So, what does this mean? Real quickly, um, what it's telling us, or this letter that is being written by uh, John, it, it's saying this, we are working towards spiritual perfection. Uh, and the ultimate goal is to be like God, who is holy. There are passages in the Bible that say, Be holy because I, your Heavenly Father, am holy. And so what does that mean? Something is that's holy is the opposite of something that is evil or sin. So the ultimate goal for a, a believer in God, a child of God, a Christian, is to be holy. Which means to be sinless. And this is how the letter is open. To not sin. Okay? Now, am I sitting here telling you that I am a sinless individual? I am perfect? No. But there are other passages in the Bible that tell us that when we give our maximum effort, this allows the Holy Spirit to work in us to get us to the point where we don't do those things that we used to do. The next part talks about if. It didn't say when. It said if we sin. Not when we sin. Guess what? Christ is our advocate. One of my favorite commentators made a comment that how we look at this word advocate or Christ as the intercessor in some other translations is that Christ serves as our divine defense attorney. Okay? Defending us from who? Guess who? The devil. The prosecution. The devil is constantly trying to prosecute us. But Jesus Christ is our defense. Okay? He's our defense attorney. Oh, and by the way, he can acquit us. How is it that he can acquit us? So, what 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 does that mean for us? Because he is our atoning sacrifice, it makes the devil's prosecution of no effect. Um, now let's talk about the atoning sacrifice. Uh, in some other versions of the Bible, you may see the word propitiation. So what does that really mean? Without getting too deep, the atoning sacrifice spoken in this passage reminds us that the death of Christ satisfied the demands of God's holiness for the punishment of sin. All right? So Christ took the sin, or at least Christ took my punishment, because I believe this, Christ took my punishment for the sins that I committed. Um, those sins sent, sentenced me to death row. Let's, let's put it like that, right? A spiritual death. But in doing so, in Christ taking that sin or that punishment, what did he do? He died in the process, okay? And because he died trying to save me, or he died saving me, guess what? The charges against me were dropped, and I'm no longer on death row. This is what Christ did for me. Finally, in the last portion of today's scripture, it reminds us the importance of admitting uh, our own faults, and then repenting and asking God to help us work through them. Truthfully, in order to achieve what the writer wrote at the beginning, we have to admit that we've done wrong. We have to admit there are things in our lives that need to be rooted out and 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 dealt with so that those those issues don't lead us to do things that are outside of the will of God. Once we realize there's an issue, we find the root of that issue and we work through it with with the help of other Christians, maybe mental health professionals. The thing is that root may be causing us to do something against God. And so once we get to the root of that issue, we get to the root of not doing that thing that goes against God's will, okay? And that's how we get to this point where the writer is talking about not sinning. We rooted out all of our mess, we've dealt with it, and whatever that thing used to cause us to do, we don't do it anymore. Ergo, we don't sin at all. This is my goal in my life, and for my wife and my son and my, and my family. Um, now, there's something else that needs to be said here. The passage talks about mankind in general, not the individual, because we know individually we make choices. And everyone 
does not make the choice to believe that Christ is their Savior. Everyone does not make the choice to believe that they are even sinners. So while Christ made himself available to all, all don't believe. One of my favorite commentators says, The pardon of sin is offered to the whole world, but received only by those who believe. The scripture does not give Christians kind of a blank check or the freedom to sin on demand and just repent thinking they're okay. No, not at all. Not at all. We have to understand that this passage motivates us to not sin at all, right? Because guess what? That thing that's inside of us that's causing it to do it, we've rooted it out. So we don't sin anymore. Well, that's the goal, right? So this scripture reminds us that, yes, we can achieve that goal, all right? The whole point is to realize your own sin, your own faults, your own issues, right? And repent knowing that you have issues, but also knowing that you have an advocate in Christ Jesus who paid for your release from death row. So I hope you were inspired today. This thing was very inspirational to me. Please share, reread it for yourself. Let me know what you think. Until next time, have a great day.